this video we will take a look at the JVPM business application extension for Visual Studio Code, JBA VSC. Here I am on GitHub, uh, repository of this extension, and uh, you can see you download all the uh, source codes and also you have detailed documentation on how to use this extension and what it does. Uh, this extension is also available in the Visual Code Marketplace and also inside your uh, Visual Studio Code IDE. Just go to the Extensions button and search for JVPM and it should be the first one uh, to go. In this video I will do a demo about the new version 060 which includes a big upgrade which is also debugging your JVPM business application. So we will take a look at generating and also debugging uh, your apps um, for JVPM. So let's take a look. Uh, I will go to my Visual Studio Code and here I have opened my editor in a sample directory TTT where I want to generate my business application. Here uh, in order to launch the extension I will open up the command prompt palette and I will first go to generate JVPM business application. This is one of the new commands that the extension adds. Once I click on that, I will be prompted with uh, quick options if I want to generate the default or configure my business app. Let's go ahead and configure it. We want business processes, so we will hit business automation. Uh, the name for our app, let's call it my business app. And the package is OK. Now here you can select different versions. Let's say select the 717.0. And we want just business processes. We don't want case management yet, so we will click on business assets. Now we confirm, yes, we want to generate it. And this will generate the um, JPM business application zip file and also extract it for you. So now we have three modules, KJAR, which includes our business processes, our model, which includes reusable resources, um, uh, stuff like that and also our service app which is our Spring Boot application that we're actually going to launch and then also debug. So one of the things right now um, until the new community release of JPM comes out is there is one small change we have to do to our My Business App service. Um, if you go under source main Java um, you see one of the generated files is the default um, web security which adds basic HTTP authentication uh, for our REST services. How, this is fine however for third-party apps such as this extension for example we all have to enable um, course or cross-origin resource um, capabilities. For that um, I have a very quick gist here that you can come to and I'll link it also in the description. You just have to copy it and paste it in there and that's it. And all this does is adds course configuration uh, to our business application so our extension can access its REST resources. And that's pretty much it. Now that we have that in our KJAR under source main resources, we see that currently we have no business processes available that we want to debug. Typically you would have your own here, the ones that you want to debug, but for sake of this demo I have created um, a small repository and I'll link it in the description as well called JBAVSC Demo Resources where I've added excuse me a number of uh, business processes, some SVG images and the process uh, forms that you can use to test with. So let's go ahead and clone this uh, repository and we can for that go into our terminal and say git clone and give it the git URL and that will add the JBAVC demo resources here. Now I'm going to go into it. Um, all right. And I'm going to copy everything into our KJAR source main resources directory. Okay. So now we see in our KJAR we have a bunch of processes that we can run and debug and go from there. Now what I want to do also inside the IDE, where am I? All right. So I mean I want to go back to my um, my business app service and here I want to give 
permissions for our launch script um, to be executed and I'm just going to launch our exp um, application also inside the editor with launch sh clean install. So what this will basically do, it, it will go ahead and build our KJAR model and service modules. It will deploy, uh, so compile and deploy all our business processes into a container uh, which our service will have access to. And it will also compile our service or uh, Spring Boot application and also launch it for us. So let's just wait for a second for this to launch. It shouldn't take long at all. All right, so this is already launching and it should be done any second. So let's go ahead and close. Well, actually, I want to leave it open just to show something. All right, so our business application has started and at this time you can minimize your terminal and you don't need it anymore. As we see here in, um, in here, our default authentication username and password for REST services is user and user and you will see why I'm, I'm showing you this. So let's go ahead and open up the command palette again and the second command that the extension adds uh, to your IDE is debug your JPM business application. So let's click on that and again it's going to ask you where is your business application running. If you're running it locally just like we did it's going to be by default under localhost 89. So we click OK to that and our default auth that we talked about is username user and password is also user. So once we have done that, um, the extension will open up, um, let me close this, a new window for you, editor window, and let's minimize this as well. Um, this is your debugging environment. It contains five sections, so let's take a look from top to bottom. The first is static information about your server, uh, the ID that, uh, 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 of the server in your business application, the capabilities that it has, and stuff like that. And these are collapsible so you can maintain, you know, have good space for, for uh, other things, the debugging and stuff like that. The second one is container information. So currently we have one KJAR where we deployed our business processes and its ID is my business app KJAR and we see the status that it has started. Uh, sometimes you have multiple KJARs that you want to deploy, so you'll have them listed here as well. The next thing is our process definition. So these are the business processes that we have defined or uh, added to source main resources of, cage, of our KJAR, and they're listed here. Uh, for each one, if we click on info, we can see our uh, process image. So this is basically, uh, business process that has one user task and a script task and here also we can see the process definition variables uh, that are defined here so we have first name address last name and blah 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 um, now let's go ahead and start a business process if you come here and press start this will uh, tell your JPM business application to go ahead and start this business process and we will be presented with the process form now you can either generate if you have an FRM file um, for the business process form or if not you this will generate a, a generic form for you so you're good to go here and here we can enter in some information we can leave it blank for the demo and once we have started under active processes we see that we have an active instance running of hello world with task um, version 1.0 now at this point we have two possible actions. We can view our business process instance which will serve as the image will be now annotated. So we see here at the start um, is uh, node is grayed out. So that means the process has started and passed this node. Uh, the nodes with the red border around them are currently active. So we see that our business process has started and it's currently in a, a wait state waiting for completion of the gather info user task. We can also uh, click here on variables and we can see here the current value since we didn't add anything to it they're all going to be blank but we'll, I will show you soon how you can actually go ahead and change that as well. So right now we have also in active processes it tells us that we have some active tasks in order to complete this business um, um, process instance and we are in the gather info, we click on that, we'll be presented with a task form 
where we can also enter in um, the input and uh, the output data for this task and we can click on complete and at this time we see we have completed our um, uh, business process instance and we have received no processing errors now let's take a look at for example uh, how to uh, use processing errors and how to utilize that for this I have a business process call, called hello world with error so let's take a look at that um, if we go to image we will see that it has again a user task however the script task here says that if our first name uh, process variable but with the time the process reaches here is blank or, or null you will throw an exception so let's go ahead and start an instance of this business process and make sure that we don't enter anything in the first name so it, we will see the exception being thrown now at this time we have it here we're in the gather info task and let's go ahead and try to complete this and if you see here we will actually oh, I clicked it two times but if you can see we have um, let's acknowledge one of them an error here called hello world with error and it says first name is blank and what the JPM engine does is if it encounters an error it will roll back our transaction and we will end up back to um, the last save point or in this case our user task so we try to complete our user task the script task in this point has thrown an exception and the engine has rolled us back to um, our gather info task so now if we look at this how do we fix this well let's see if we want to debug and say let's see if our first name wasn't blank with our business process instance complete uh, you can click on in the under variables under each cell and actually change the value of this particular uh, process instance variable so for example first name we're going to now say Tihomir and close that and now let's try to complete our business process and uh, actually before we do that actually yeah that's fine and now our business process instance is completed now the processing errors they will stay here and there is an ag button this basically tells you as a developer okay I'm acknowledging that this error has happened there is no it doesn't really do anything except letting you know um, what errors happened um, you can either acknowledge them which will get rid of them in this list or you can keep them there during your uh, uh, debugging to see all the errors that happen during your debug session so this is basically what we have added the business process debugging for the future we're thinking to add a lot more things um, there is also a big issue with editing business processes creating business processes that the extension is uh, going to handle soon and um, a lot more things again you know we're looking for contributions uh, we're looking for help from our community if you're interested in writing uh, VS Code extensions and would like to help us get this extension much better than what it is now uh, please let us know and uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great day